Hello everyone, welcome to the AOI Streams, in-depth conversations with digital artists and experts to explore how blockchain technology is impacting the future of art. AOI, also known as Art on Internet, is the movement for emerging arts and technology. I'm Federica and today I'll be your host. In this episode, we're exploring the career and creative process of Ana Carreras, from her Mediterranean influences to creative coding. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Inner Code Masterclasses. Very excited to be here today with the amazing generative artist Ana Carreras. Hi Ana. Hello, how are you? I'm um, good, I'm good, how are you? <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. And hello everyone who's in the audience. I see you, I see Daniel, Corey, Lone Week. Hello everyone, thank you for being with us. And also some new faces, which I haven't seen before. Thank you for being here. Um, so yes. let's start. Uh, for those who maybe are not familiar with this uh, type of master classes, we usually start with a little bit of an introduction. We just talk with the artist, kind of understand you know their concepts, where they're coming from, and then uh, we dive into the screen sharing part where they show us everything about the creative process, um, their inspirations as well, and their new collections or old collections, everything about their art. So. I usually start by asking the artists, like, how did you get into generative art and how did you start creating? But we have something in common, which is that we live in the same city <laughs> and it's been my home as well. And so I was like, no, we have to start with that. Um, so this kind of, you know, this kind of inspiration that you have with the uh, Spain, but the Catalan uh, region, especially, it's just, it's just so interesting to me. Um, and I know that Spanish like landscapes have been like a big inspiration for you. So start by telling us something about you know your your inspirations in terms of where you live, where you grew up. Yeah. Okay. Well, hello everybody. Hola. Yes, we actually are living in Barcelona with Federica. I grew up here in Barcelona, but my family is from uh, more towards the a center part of Spain, this kind of uh, landscape, very dry, you can imagine there's no rain almost, uh, uh, it's, the soil is really dry and it's difficult to grow uh, uh, things there to cultivate uh, plants, so it has his, the, its own uh, characteristics, that landscape and then in contrast, I'm in Barcelona in the Mediterranean seaside. And it's, um, we have uh, this, yeah, this other openness to the sea. We have, it's not a huge, uh, a big sea, it's a small one. So you can feel you have neighbors in the other part, in Africa, in Asia. You have, you have connections with uh, cultures like uh, people in Italy or Greece, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco. So it's it, this kind of contrast and this landscape that it, it kind of secretly or not that secretly, but it kind of uh, in the inner part of my work, it's there, it drives my inspiration. And I think it's uh, something I can bring to the, to the community or I, something that I can bring to my art that it's... Uh, part of my inner voice, my past, my experience, my life experience. And it's something quite, um, I think, unique part of my, yeah, that's it, my my own voice that I'm, I'm I, I love. So I just uh, want to share with, with all the, the audience or with, yeah, just sharing or putting some, some of it in the words I, I do. That's awesome. And in fact, most of your work, I think it really is inspired by memories and the past. Is it something that um, you find that it's kind of repetible in your in your collections? And like, do you look a lot in the past to find inspiration usually? And good question. Not not that much. It's more about in the my culture and my landscape. Um, Sometimes I go for the memories because something because it's it's um, yeah it's 
it's an idea there that I maybe an idea I want or or that drives me uh, to create that Im image. So or that project. So yes, this idea that I can search in my memories and in my imaginary also, and try to combine them to create images that once they are um, they are done and they are exposed to, to the viewers, then maybe they can also bring back to people to to their own experiences or or this landscape or can take them to, yeah, to some travels or to, can create some kind of storytelling. No, no, that absolutely makes sense. It's almost like you've always been inspired by everything that kind of surrounds you, whether it's like other people or, or landscapes or, you know, it's, you can tell a lot about your surroundings by your work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's about um, getting inspiration from nature, but also from culture, how we live, how we relate, what we cook, because it's a big part of our traditions, or yeah, what we celebrate, or how we connect to, to each other, how, how we behave, yeah. So it's, it's uh, the landscape, but also the, the culture, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And have you always been like a creative person growing up? Like as a kid, you you always explored different like art mediums or? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, yeah, I, I should. Yeah, I might say that that that's that's the case. I was uh, I remember being in school, uh, playing with clay and and making some sculpture painting and drawing and I'm really bad at, at drawing and it's it's like this kind of situations that we face like ah oh, someone told me you are an artist uh, and they give you a pen on a and some paper and it's like can you draw something nice and I'm like oh my god I cannot draw anything at all I'm super <laughs> bad by hand and it's I not, feel it's, you yeah, it's, I, I need I need a computer and I need to code to to to, to create yeah. something. So, but yeah, I was uh, I was uh, exploring, yeah, playing or or at school doing ceramics, painting, yeah. And I've been involved in some local communities in some traditions where we still build from recycled recycled materials, some sculptures to decorate the streets for some kind of local festivities. So I've been quite involved in, in creative and yeah, in creative activities, even if I'm not that good at it. <laughs> I feel you, I feel like every, cause I'm, I'm an artist too and I work in the digital side too. And when people, I, I say to people I'm an artist, they're like, oh my God, do you paint? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't paint. <laughs> don't ask me. Don't ask me about it. Just give me a laptop. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. And it's like, oh, okay, but then you paint with your laptop or your, your yeah, your tablet. And your like, tablet, no. yeah. And no. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> I even don't use a pen or something that looks like. Uh, like yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. God, yeah. But then, but then funnily enough, you're talking about how, you know, growing up, you've always been kind of creative, but funnily enough, then you went to study engineering, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was actually my mother's fault or not fault, but uh, yeah, I wanted to study fine art, but my mom just suggested to, to study something that can make a better living than being an artist. <laughs> In Spain, it's quite tough to survive. So it was like maybe you do something that can can yeah provide you more food. <laughs> let's say that. And um, I end up studying engineering because it was uh, yeah near to to my place at that time. But um, I found that uh, yeah at the end my passion was to, to make something artistic or creative and, and interactive installations and playing with the electronics, coding and visuals and things like that with all the, all the, all what, what, what I have learned from, from my studies, but applied in a crazy, in a crazy and creative way 
And my mom was still sending me some emails with job proper job offers, like, what are you doing, please? <laughs> but it was fun, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I think it happens to a lot of artists, like myself included, that you get to a point when, especially maybe in your like 20s, when you really have to choose what you want to do, kind of, and you're like, oh, maybe I should go for something that's a little bit more secure and stable. But then inevitably you get to go back to art anyways. So it's almost yes. like if you're meant to do it, you just you're just gonna go back to it anyways, right? But then what happened is that during the pandemic, it's when you got into generative art, like you explored a little well, we've been doing it for a long time, but into the NFT space during the pandemic, right? How was that? How was that um kind of a creative journey? from from engineering to generative art okay ah yes um let's say that uh, yeah i was in this creative part so i started to to develop interactive installations mostly full body um interactive installations where the audience can control the visuals or uh, music or the audio or wherever the immersive environment is uh, responding um, with their gestures, their hands, their movement, uh, their voice. Uh, so I was coding the electronics and also coding main focus. Yeah, my main focus was coding the visuals that reacted to that audience. Um, and um, yeah, I was already uh, generating uh, visuals in real time because when you have to react to, to people, um, movements or, or reactions, uh, you have to create those, um, those visuals in real time. So it's even uh, more funny to explore because people just add the unexpected uh, things that you can never, never, never uh, predict or, or think about what, what they will be doing in front of of your immersive space. Even I was uh, creating installations for kids and they are the ones that make more nonsense or unpredictable things. So if you learn to code uh, generative visuals that can react to what children do and how they play and you can be playful with them, then you can, I think you can learn a lot from, from that for your generative uh, art practice. And uh, yes, you are right, the, the pandemics uh, were quite tough. So everything that was involving the audience and the, the interaction from the, from the visitors was, was impossible to, to be set up. So I just focused, I had the time to focus on, on the visuals, on the visual part that I, I was, uh, I had been doing for several, for, yeah, before the pandemics, I think I, I was like 12 years doing interactive installations with visuals. So I just got the time to focus more on, on the generative aspects of the, those visuals, explore things that I had on my mind for a long time ago, but didn't have time to. So it just gave me some quiet moments with no work at all. <laughs> I had I had no projects at all for a long time for a year, uh, so I just um, had the opportunity yet yeah, to explore that. That's so cool. It's crazy how the pandemic has really brought a lot of people out with their creative side. No, it's kind of like we had this time to really reflect on what we wanted to do, and most people who had this kind of creative blockage, I think it was it was. Um, I'm blocked during during the pandemic, right? It was mm -hmm. a, a very strange time for for everyone, really. But in terms yes. of creative side, I think a lot of people really had the the, the time, the, the privilege as well to maybe, you know, create again or, or explore Absolutely. that a lot. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, that was a privilege. It was like everything stopped here. We were like frozen in Barcelona as everywhere. But then it, that gave me, yeah, no work in one hand, but the opportunity to focus on, on the visuals and the more the artistic uh, aspect of what uh, I have been doing for, for years. So, yeah, 
mm. and it, in, it ended up in in museums instead uh, again, but instead uh, just for for looking at it instead of playing with it. I hope some someday it merges again. <laughs> That's awesome. I was going to ask you, in fact, like, how do you think that your interactive installations have influenced the way that you make generative art? Because you still want that interactive aspect, right? Ah, yeah, that's a super good question. Uh, I don't even know if I have uh, an answer for that. Um, as I was saying, uh, working with interactive installations and creating the visuals or coding the visuals, uh, for that gave me a lot of experience of uh, how to create like what we call long form um, generative art because you can not uh, predict or you cannot curate what's going on in real time. It's like people it's interacting, visuals are rendered and created uh, live. So you cannot curate. That means that your visuals have to be has this um, co coherent uh, aesthetics and, and behavior. So they are always, uh, they are as diverse as you can. They have the narrative, they have the intention, but they have to give the audience the feeling that is it's something coherent. So yeah, I think that, that, that part of uh, working with uh, interactive experience helped me to, yeah, to then uh, build pieces to create this kind of long-term generative projects that cannot be created, but just, we, yeah, are there and we, we work with the algorithm and we, we are super surprised also as artists with the output. Uh, so, yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry. It's a new type yeah. of uh, it's a new type of interaction, let's say, but there's still this interactive element that you find. Yeah. Mm. Yes, sure. I've never I, I I could never imagine that it was going to end up like, uh, like this. Like okay, it's people creating it in that precise moment, the artwork for them, which is unique. But wow, that's that's something that when, when I discovered it, it was like, oh my God, but this is amazing. It's so powerful and so specific for generative art that, that it makes completely, totally sense. And it's, it's yeah, it even, yeah, it was like, wow, it blows my mind, yes. Um, I would love to go to the screen sharing part of the session oh, where you can yeah. show us the creative okay. process and everything else. Uh, but while you do that, I want to remind everyone in the audience, because I see there's quite some people now, please feel free to share any questions. Uh, don't be shy. There's no wrong question here. So uh, feel free to send us any comments or questions here. Um, and yeah, I'll let you I'll let you share your screen, Anna. Okay, thank you. Okay, before that, yeah, um, I will just uh, well, share the screen and then I will go on. Uh, let's see, entire screen, okay, sure. And then I have this, okay. Uh, I have some images of, um, of what I've been doing uh, lately. These two, yeah, I started well during the, the lockdown and then some of the projects that came from there. But uh, some of these things, yeah, we already mentioned that. Uh, the thing is, um, as we were saying, Rika, I, I start with interactive installations that were more for theaters, the scenography, museums, or the audience to contribute to the artwork, but end up um, like, uh, doing just generative art and being in, in the galleries online and in physical in real life yeah after all the after all these pandemics uh, calm down um, the thing is that in all my projects there's something that that um, drives me or or I'm always looking and it's the systems be and the complexity behind some of these uh, generative artworks and projects. And I'm also trying all the time to 
to find the generative art and generative media soul. So it's own really own uh, characteristics that cannot be achieved uh, creating art in any other media or, or, or techniques and uh, how this can combine with digital media. So I will show you some of the, of the projects. Some of them are more focused on systems and complexity. Some of them are more um, into diving into how uh, we find these uh, generative media characteristics that, that are unique of the generative media. And um, I will end up uh, live coding from scratch, from a blank, yeah, from, from a white page. Uh, some of these ideas that uh, are in are all of them in my in my last project that was uh, released last month. So um, yeah, about um, the generative medium. One one of my actually my first uh, project uh, on the NFT space was a res. This project here was for the. Uh, first exhibition, the opening exhibition of Fair, Feral File platform. It was a, this exhibition uh, named Social Codes, created by Casey Rees. I was there with, uh, with the incredible artists, with uh, uh, Leah, uh, Sasha, Maya, Frederick, Manolo, Dimitri. Oof, I was there. And what's behind that project, these uh, arrels, it's even it uses fovistic uh, colors. It's inspired by this dry uh, landscape we were talking about before. This this part of the dry soil that we have in the in the center of Spain. That's where where it's tough to grow plants and they have to they need this the roots to to create this kind of uh, and this is the my grandparents. Uh, hometown or small village where they grow. So I'm, I'm always visiting them and the family during it. So this is the kind of what, what it's behind, even if there's nothing that literally goes from, from the landscape to the, to the project. But, but I hope that some part of what's going on there um, ends up in the final image. This is an animated, never-ending uh, project. This is only a loop that I took for you, but um, the live view, it's uh, generated in real time. And it's this kind of roots or branches that are, are being created and then they just fade away. So they die and new ones appear in front of them. So it's this kind of uh, digging deeper into the into the yeah into the the, the landscape to, to create that and it and you can see uh, sometimes uh, that they are built uh, with circles so it's just um, using circles a lot of repetition and um, and a lot of uh, randomness and this is something that really interests me how because randomness and repetition, I think it's something that's really uh, unique um, from generative art. People that make illustration or they draw by hand, they can repeat lines, but it takes them a lot of time and it's something that maybe can be impossible at some point. So, so yes, um, I'm trying to use that just to create textures or images that cannot be uh, created uh, in any other way. So the next project that I I was trying to 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 explore this technique was Ganchillo, and this is link this is linked in, or this having two of my main interests is how we can use repetition to um, to create this kind of textures that are really they feel really digital but but organic and at the same time and how we can bring some memories from, from the past uh, to the artwork. And this is my grandmother's uh, crochet and the inspiration behind Ganchillo, which the, it's the name for crochet. It's, um, it's this, I have 
a lot. My mom and my grandmother have a lot of these kind of uh, circular pattern, crochet patterns uh, at home. And I was like, okay, um, they when they create them where they are crocheting, they are also doing a repetition, handmade and handcrafted repetition. But it's for me, this is what I do with the loops in my code. And they sometimes they make mistakes. So it's the same idea with the code. We we make bugs and we make errors. But maybe that idea um, brings us to another output or an interesting visual that we can we can explore. So it was it was this link that how can I create I take something that it's also repetitive and while you are doing it, it's like you are uh, meditating because you are talking. Sometimes you pay more attention, sometimes you cannot, but it gives you the time to just uh, be uh, there creating and handcrafting. And for me, coding sometimes, uh, it's like gets my focus and I'm totally into it. So it's like uh, some kind of active meditation. So it, it ends up being interactive. So you can choose how many repetitions you can, you can, uh, it's, you can, you are crocheting or you are drawing. It's something that evolves and, and it's changing. So it's also animated. And it was also, uh, it was, this work was created by, by the Manico Quaranta for, for fair another, another fair file exhibition. And, and yeah, after, after creating it, it was like, okay, maybe I didn't took the colors directly from the landscape. But then um, these blue and yellow colors with the white and black resonated to me. And then looking at, at some pictures that I took that year during summer, summer in that region, it was like, okay, I didn't pick directly the colors from the photographs uh, uh, as we could do or some other artists that are doing for generative art. But um, I ended up uh, choosing a palette and a color palette that was linked to the to the previous idea. So it's just how can we bring this kind of memories and this kind of creations using generative art um, that makes them so special and we cannot uh, uh, that links to our past experiences, memory or or life. And I had, it ended up in an exhibition, and I had the opportunity to, to print them and. Uh, I have, it, I have it here, maybe. Can we, Frederica, can we just stop sharing the screen? Because yes. I have it here, so. so stop sharing, can... okay, it's me who stops sharing the screen, okay. Okay, yeah, because I had the opportunity, see, I had the opportunity to, and I don't know if the webcam will do justice, but there are some details that you can, you can tell, okay, this is absolutely uh, digital. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can tell from some of the details that, okay, this is digital, but this is made by a machine. But even though it was a machine that did that or create that, it has something organic or it has something that can uh, mm -hmm. take us when we look at it to, to our, to our okay. memories of something really that personal. Works, uh... That work really um, somehow reminds me a lot of the the sea as well. A lot of underwater. I don't know if uh, if it's a possibility, but um, it did remind me of that and also of um, what is the name of of the of the castle and uh, tiles that we have on the street. The yeah. the Barcelona tiles. I kind of not ah. sure. Yeah, mosaics. Mm -hmm. When. Maybe okay, yeah, yeah. That's 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 a mm -hmm. good point. Wow, super. Yeah, I'm quite sure that that yeah, there's something behind it that can be can be inspired by that. Yeah, you are totally right. Yes, and that's the that's the idea or or my purpose. It's like maybe you find in that artwork something that it's more from undersea, but it's it's it, as as it the inspiration that drove me was so personal, then I hope that it can take you to some place from your personal experience or 
your personal memories. So yeah, that's 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 my main uh, concern, and, and I'm exploring it a lot. So yeah, maybe it was not um, in real life. It was like okay, me with the with the framed uh, art piece, but. Uh, it was not so I took some pictures that you can see now and I framed it for the exhibition I frame it with this uh, golden frame wood frame that also has this kind of natural or painted texture that goes with the digital noisy texture in the background of the artwork so it's like okay you are you have them face to face the the painted natural um, texture and the digital and and they quite combined quite well. And I choose the golden frame because in Spain, if you frame things with golden frames, they are like proper art <laughs> that can go to big museums. And then that was quite funny. Uh, like, okay, digital art is also for me, a big, big art and generative art is for me, the one that can go to big, big museums in the, in the cities. So yeah. Was it hard to find uh, the, the perfect uh, paper, for example, um, that would yeah. you know, show the perfect colors? Because I know that different papers have different effects. So how, how was that process? Was it long? Yes, you, are, you have been working with two, two printers, two local printers. And uh, I've been <laughs> visiting them a lot and talking with them a lot. <laughs> So uh, we have been doing, and I can share, yeah, I will share some other test prints um, that, I've been, that I've been doing. So I'm doing, I'm trying different papers. I'm doing several test prints also to adjust the color that it's uh, really the one that I that I've chosen for the art piece. And then having a lot of conversations with them, like, okay, this is digital, so I want it to be, to have this uh, organic feeling, but at the same time, when you look close, I want it to have this, this pure digital uh, feeling. So how we can we can um, achieve that? And, and that implied a lot, a lot of visiting them and talking with them, but it's okay. It was, I learned an, a lot during the process. So, so that was fun. But this is another case. Yeah, this is another case of trying to explore this idea of how we can um, repeat something that from far away, it, this is a triptych, so there's a kind of a organic continuity. But when you go closer, it's uh, just straight lines with kind of noise and they are moving a little bit so they can create this kind of, um, of uh, colors that vanish. It's, it's not a gradient. It's not the, the gradient of colors is not coat. It's because they are moving in a way that that they overlap in a way that they are creating gradients. And if you look closer and closer, it's like okay, this is something that that someone uh, uh, drawing by pen or by colors or handmade cannot cannot achieve. So it's something that really it can only create a, an algorithm and and with a lot of repetitions and. And I'm loving to explore to explore this idea. How can we push the algorithms that we use for generative art to show in the in the final visuals that they have some kind of organic feeling that they are done with repetitions and with generative art. They cannot be done uh, in any other way. So even if there's not code inside the algorithm, some kind of uh, things appear using repetition and randomness that are there and for me they are this kind of the, it's this is the what I am calling the soul or the intrinsic character the characteristics of of generative art and I'm trying to push all my projects to have something uh, that uh, explores this this idea yeah well, yeah, yeah, this is another one, but uh, it uses a lot of, uh, yeah, we can talk about these or not, but this one, oh, sorry, it's inspired uh, by a building because it was commissioned uh, 
It was a commission. It, this is not an NFT. It was a commission from uh, Palau de la Musica, which is a building where they make choral music and concerts. And Federica, if you are in Barcelona, you know that this building is yes. amazing. It's an art I nouveau. I love this place. It's an it's art nouveau place. building that it's like, oh my God. And all the details from Art Nouveau that we have here in Barcelona, you are right, the tiles and, and the buildings, uh, they speak to me a lot because they have also this, like you have this huge image of the building, but then you can go closer and look at the details and how they are crafted. So I take a lot of inspiration, in not only the colors, but also how they were built or how they were created and how wow, they work. Beautiful. Yeah, this is the ceiling of the of the main uh, area where they make concerts. And this is uh, the flutes are there. You can see the flutes there. And this is the all the where you you go to to hear the concerts. And so there's what something the, what was this uh, work commissioned for? This work was commissioned for a I, I will answer, stop sharing the screen again. <laughs> this work was commissioned to, uh, for the, the, all the, the catalog that they are uh, presenting during the year. It's like a full, which makes me so happy. It's full of genetic art. That and, is beautiful. Um, yes. Uh, we had some, uh, yeah, even for Christmas, we have a special edition. Yeah, for summer, we had some, no, this is December, and this is something about, yeah. So they used it um, just to share the, the, the concerts and their program, but that meant that Generative Park was spread all around the city, and I was in love with that, like, okay, let's, explain to people in Barcelona about generative artists and I'm so happy to have the opportunity to do that uh, so yeah that was that was a an, an incredible opportunity to to present to the city what we are doing with generative art so that was nice <laughs> so yeah again with this idea of uh, I'm sharing the screen again. Oh, I'm sharing and I'm sharing, but because I have so, so many physical things with me. <laughs> so I can just uh, show you in real life and it's quite more interesting. Even if the webcam, it's not that good. Uh, sure, okay. So, I love this combination that we're doing a little bit of um, the screen sharing and the physical. I love it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> It's less uh, like sharing the screen and more like, yeah, I can't yeah, like, This is the digital and this is what I did with it in real life. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Okay, and then another of another part of uh, I'm focusing on and it's uh, my kind of a obsession. It's how can we play with systems and complexity uh, in generative art projects. So even if we don't code some uh, behaviors and they are not literally coded, some uh, nice behaviors or visuals emerge and how this can bring to diversity and things like that. And it's quite um, inspired by nature again, and it's quite uh, easy to understand because birds and this is some photographs from Chavi Bo that go that it's also um, uh, working here in Barcelona and it's uh, taking pictures uh, from birds and I had the opportunity to talk with him like two weeks ago um, it's like one bird doesn't have they, they, or, or this huge amount of bird they don't have they don't have any director, they don't uh, have any choreography prepared, but at the end, just following simple rules to, two simple rules, which are, I will follow the main direction of the group because I'm with that living or socializing with that group. And I will follow the 
main direction, but taking care of my neighbors because I don't want to, to crash with them. With just these two simple rules, they create these amazing drawings in the air. Uh, so it's like, how can we uh, grasp something from this kind of systems that uh, even if it's not coded and even if they are following deterministic rules, some nice things emerge or they surprise our, us because uh, things happen that are not coded in the algorithm. And as you can see, I have more examples from the Diego Suarez and Robert Hodgkin that explore how birds create these kind of drawings and images because it's it's fascinating. So um, yeah, that was the the idea of uh, of exploring that. And I was well, I was exploring as I will tell you, I I was exploring that during the lockdown. Like, how can we go from something that it's really all organized and, and repetitive like patterns, so repetition to something that in the opposite side to that it's really random and noisy and we have this other kind of visuals. And there's, there's a continuum in between this ordered and this disordered or chaotic or noisy images that can be uh, really interesting to explore and I've been exploring them for for a long time and I will skip some of them because if not you will die of me talking but um, I could talk of, about this for, no, for we decades. Want to see everything. <laughs> for, for decades. <laughs> we have some comments from the from the comment ah, okay. section in the, yeah, we don't sure. have questions. So ah, if okay. anyone wants to um, okay, okay, okay. don't be shy, send your questions. But long yeah, week sure. before he said uh, I love the palettes and textures in Ariels. So oh. we've received some comments uh, of appreciation of your work. So it's very, very nice oh, to hear you. that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. OK. OK, one of the um, projects that put in play this idea of systems is uh, through sets. That was uh, an art box curated uh, project in 2021. And, and this one really explores uh, it, how we can build uh, um, how we can build, oh, I'm sorry, um, yeah, now, how we can play with uh, building blocks and arrange them um, in a grid. We, and you can see in this image that there are only in your, in the top, oh my God, I have that dyslexia. So in the top left, there are 13 building blocks. And when they are combined, they can create this, uh, final images, which are really diverse one from each other. And so they are just combining them. And um, we can have really, really uh, different uh, main um, images or final images. And I was struggling with this system uh, because of that, because I wanted to explore this idea of how can just with simple rules create something that it's really diverse, that has different um, kind of, uh, of uh, visual results that can surprise us and, and can, can speak more than, than what the rules in the algorithm uh, are telling, telling even to us, the artists. So that was true sets and of course some of the, and that was after I released the project, I realized, okay, I choose the inspiration from my landscape. As you can see from the seaside, there are some color, color palettes that are inspired by the seaside, but I didn't took directly the colors from, from the photographs. I found them after releasing the project, but it was obvious <laughs> for me at that point that, okay, if I choose uh, a color palette and I name it paella, it's because uh, my culture and my, my own experience goes with me and, and, and really pushed me or suggested me that those colors were coming from, from the paella or tortilla and, and also from the landscape or from this kind of dry landscape. Uh, this, this, it's, it's this uh, palette called Olivos because we have a lot of olive trees here. But I think it's also interesting to point that it's like, 
okay, it looks like art uh, should be something for museums and maybe you cannot understand it if you have not seen a lot of art or, or, or there's a, a big, a huge uh, inspiration behind that. And, and for me, it's like it's art, it's more, and I think Web3 uh, have done it really nice. It's for everyone and inspiration can come from, a, from a, something that you cook or something that you usually eat or a dish that you have, or a, or a meal, sorry, that you had in, in, during that summer and you have good memories from that. And it's like, it's not that, that height, everyone can appreciate it, everyone can find something in, in art pieces and in different, um, uh, yeah, pictures or, or images that, that, so it was more like, okay, Inspiration can come even from food, from what we see in our landscape, or or from whatever. And uh, also, yeah, just, just sorry. One thing you're also mentioning that um, I think I've read that Trossets was also kind of representing diversity as well because you wanted to kind of show that. Where does that come from, though, um, compared to you know the color palette and the inspiration of like the food and the landscapes, but then there's also this element of diversity in it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was, um, yes, that's a good question. That was my, my obsession with systems and how they play and how they, you can build uh, from simple rules and from a, a just, 13 building blocks, you can play this game of arrange them. And these true sets are uh, inspired by, by um, some classical uh, generative art algorithm that it's called Truche. So the name is also playing with the name, like true sets, which means parts and blocks. It's inspired by our Truche tiles. And um, but it took me six months to figure out how to change it a little bit and to tweak the algorithm and to play with colors uh, to, to create more uh, original images uh, that we ha I, ha I had never seen before. So there's more background color. Uh, the, the, there's more empty space in this kind of... Uh, of forms that end up in every every true set, uh, and yeah, it took me a while. Like, okay, how I balance the details, how I balance the simplicity, or just using dots, just using circles and straight lines, and yeah, and I and I was exploring them for for six months and playing with them for six months, yeah, before before releasing them. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so the diversity part was was a huge, a huge, uh, difficult part. Yes, as in every long term project, I assume. Yes, I don't know if that answered the question. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Totally. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. I was just trying to get like even more like inspirations uh, out of it and the concepts, but yeah, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, yes, and the and the last project that I think um, has a lot of what I've been uh, talking about is these discs project because they th this kind of circular discs, uh, mathematical discs emerge, and this project uh, was released this this uh, January and and was exhibited and has some of these ideas. This one, it's, it's super, it's, a, it's a, another system exploring relations, uh, not diversity, but relations. And it's a super simple system where you just uh, randomly um, throw elements, which are these uh, circular um, here, black, blue, and red uh, elements, and you put them on this grid. And each element then, or each individual then checks if uh, for its neighbors, if it in, yeah, 
it looks uh, up, down, left, and right only. And if if there if the element or the individual has neighbors, it just try it connects to the to the neighbor with a line or with a with a um, uh, with a curve, whatever. So it just connects to the to the neighbors. Is this, so sorry. Is yeah. this um, is this connected with the birds inspiration that you were showing us before? This is connected, yes, on how uh, some visual things can emerge and some visuals can can be there that we didn't code them. Because I didn't code the idea of having a lot of uh, circular big connections in this final output. I just scattered um, or I just randomly placed individuals in the grid and asked them to to connect uh, with their neighbors, uh, mm -hmm. but I didn't. I didn't choose to have more connections in the lower left, in the lower right part, and um, the lower left part uh, leave it more empty or with more space. Or I didn't choose to have only two um, individuals that are isolated here, and you can see them perfectly because they are these black and blue and red um, dots. Mm. So it's like, I didn't choose that, but the uh, the final image was like that. So that that's, uh, takes me a lot of time to, to look to systems that can create this kind of uh, behaviors. And I, I think this one speaks a lot of also how we relate uh, as human beings, like, okay, we are, um, we are doing our lives, but we are trying to connect with our neighbors. Uh, and then how two connections can lead from one person to another and how we can get connected to someone that is in the other part or in the other corner of the image. Uh, is there a connection between the top left and the bottom part of the, of the image or there's no any connection because uh, some connection is broken? Um, mm. So it speaks a lot of how are our relations and how we how we relate, and even it's not coded in the algorithm. These relations just emerge and create these kind of uh, clusters of more circular circular uh, forms and bigger bigger disks or or not. So so this one is more talking about relations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, kind of that, like what you were telling us, uh, you're showing us before the photographs of the birds moving together, kind yes. of looking left and right and, and yes. kind of yeah, being connected to others, but also going on their own path, kind of. Yeah, um, yes. I love that, yes. I love that. And what about the palette? How did you choose that? This one was just, uh, for this project, I just was exploring how to combine um, how to have some warm colors in the, a ver, let's see, how, how to have uh, warm colors in warm one side or in one part of the, of the connections and more um, blue, red and, and cold uh, colors in the other part and how this could create a, a shade um, in the, in the, final global image so it was a uh, it was uh, not inspired by the landscape this time it was more about relations and how uh, warm relations or cold relations or more these kind of things can can be there so yeah and i also have some yeah and they also explore yeah because i merge things they they also explore if you can see in this close up they also explore repetition and randomness and how you can draw these connections uh, using using only lines. So it's something that uh, even if we, if the wall image speaks as a wall, then when you get closer, it's something that can only be be created and achieved with with generative art and with uh, with code. So yeah, it has also something about all my obsessions and what I'm and doing research and only working on. Uh, and I will stop.
sharing the screen again because I have them. I, I just received the, the print test. So, a ver. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, Let's I don't see. know. This is the color oh, yeah, we can test. See them. Yeah. Oh, wow. The color test. So, it's like when you look close, I don't know. The, yeah. You can see. A ver. I have this one and this one. So, there's this super digital thing that when you get closer, it's like, okay, this can only be achieved by randomness and repetition. So, and it was quite hard because connections should look nice, but also digital. And sometimes they, they work better as a continuum and sometimes they, 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 they don't. But I left that on purpose because life and relations are like that, <laughs> actually, too. Or they look to me like this. So, yeah, I just, uh, and this is the green one. So, how the isolated individuals and then how the rest are like, yeah. Yeah, so that's it. That. And I especially love what you just said about the fact that. There's parts that don't that don't connect necessarily perfectly, and that really really represents relationships so much. Like any type of relationship, really, it can be that at some point they're connected and then they're not anymore, or they've never been, but they're connected by other elements together. Um, I love to see that, and I love to see how you're putting all this digital work into physical spaces, one way or another. You know, whether it's print, whether it's the the, the catalogue that you showed us before, you're really like bringing this, you're really bridging these two words, right? Is this something that you've um, you've explored in the last few years? Like, have you found that it's been maybe a little bit more easier now nowadays compared to maybe years ago? Yeah, sure. Maybe it's something that I bring from uh, creating interactive installations. It's like, okay, I'm going for prints, but I'm trying to bring things to real life and it's my way to to explain to the world what we are doing in generative art and my passion and what I love so yeah that's 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 a good question uh, for sure this year I will try to explore more how to bring uh, this kind of digital works to to in real life and using other media to, to create artworks. So I will ex be exploring more that, that idea, yes. That's awesome, that's awesome. Very excited to see what you're gonna come up with this year. Yes. Very excited and, for your- And no, uh, I'm not using plotters. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know that you, I tried to, I had one, I bought once one and I, it took me one month to set up all the, everything, all the screws and everything. And then I started just coding it rough in G code. And it was like, oh my God, I'm getting in this rabbit hole. And um, I just put it back in, 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 the, in the box. And it was like, okay, maybe <laughs> another day. Another time. It's like the it's like painting and the drawing. You're just like no, not for me. <laughs> yes, or maybe in the future and not with this robot because it took one month to set up everything, the motors and everything, and it was like okay, okay, <laughs> I don't want to to spend more time with that. So yeah, and um, if if we have some time left, I wanted to share some of the of techniques behind this idea of repetition. How Please. how we can explore that? Um, so I will share the screen again and uh, code some, make some live coding for for the for yeah. people that it's following us in Discord. And um, yeah, I usually and and I know that it's another question that sometimes pop up, pops up. I code using processing and I. I, I use the I use the IDE uh, that comes with processing, which is not the best solution. But um, as I also teach processing every year for students and uh, for graphic designers, this is my because this is I enjoy it a lot. I learn a lot from them, and it's my way of sharing everything that I know with them. Um, 
and, and bring back to the community what I know. Uh, it helps me to, to use processing IDE for my, for my teaching. It doesn't have autocomplete, so it doesn't help me to remember things. I have to remember them by, by heart. So, so it's like, it helps me to just uh, get practice and get uh, fast. And as I teach for a semester, I get fast with it. And at the end, it works for me. So, so I'm not super geek in that sense, and I'm not, uh, and I'm not uh, coding with any other other ID. Even if I tried uh, Visual Studio Code, as you can see now that I'm sharing the screen, but uh, yeah. And it takes some time to start because I have a slow screen. I a slow computer that now it it's. Uh, 15 years old because I won. I'm so you can do, mm, you can deduce and and be sure that I'm not using shaders or things like this. I have an old computer and I am quite happy with uh, it because if it works in my computer, if my artworks work in my computer, uh, I can be sure that they will work in any any or almost any computer mobile phone old new um not you don't need rocket science to to visualize them and to run them so i'm i'm making this like a kind of uh yeah of of being of, of on purpose trying to to be ecologic keep your, or, keep your tools or, keep your tools <laughs> but it's yes. also really good advice for for those who are starting and you know you can you can create things you don't need the the last version of anything you know that's I don't, really good I don't need a rocket science computer not no, it's not my case and I'm quite uh, proud of it because it's that uh, it means that the code can it's less weighted, can be run on any computer. You can see the artwork on almost ev ev everywhere. So it makes it easy, easier um, to spread it uh, around, around the world, I hope, because I hope to have a generative power all around the world. So um, yeah, it's only um, a dark uh, background. Uh, black background, and I will just uh, draw a circle with a white stroke um, in the middle, just for starting. So let's choose, I don't know, circle 300. Yep. And uh, Yes, and starting from this, it's like, okay, maybe uh, I can draw a circle, but I can also choose uh, another color like yellow and then draw uh, just half of that circle. And then we have this arc which is placed in the same position as the circle that we have. It has the same width and height, but the arc starts in uh, zero degrees and just go up to 180. So it's the uh, bottom part only. And as we cannot see it, I will change it like, uh, okay, what about um, uh, making it? bigger for you. Yeah, so that's it. And then just uh, let's choose another color and I will choose white now. Again, so yeah, let's make this orange and this white. And um, I will create another arc instead of drawing the circle. Let's uh, do another arc that it's the upper part of the circle, but yeah, so it goes from 180 to 
330 degrees and I work with degrees because I'm so bad with the radians. So we have the two arcs, the bottom part and the upper part. But what about um, in this case, adding some randomness that will make these be uh, like uh, more fun. What about um, this orange arc that starts in zero degrees? What about let it play like, okay, but randomly 10 degrees uh, before or start 10 degrees after. And then we have this, uh, this kind of behavior where sometimes it's, uh, it starts before or it starts after and we can, and we can just uh, stop it. And I will add a key to restart. So every time I press a key, it chooses another starting point. Now it's overlapping, but uh, now it's not overlapping because it starts. So we have different, every time we have different starting points and randomness is the one that, uh, that chooses or adds uh, this variety or this diversity here. And, um, yeah, and then the idea is like, okay, uh, can we do this also um, if we are playing with randomness, what about of repetition? And if we do uh, the same arc or we draw the same arcs uh, several times, and let's draw them, I don't know, 100 times. And this is what I'm playing a lot with to create a, images that for me cannot be created in any other medium. What about if we have arcs that they decrease their size uh, and we have 10 of them that are drawn the same way. So we have, now <clears throat> we have an arc, but here in uh, you can see that sometimes, let's make this more evident in the horizontal part. You can see that there is something more organic and noisy there that uh, it's different every time that we run the algorithm when I press the, the key. So it's like, okay, it's something that cannot be achieved by hand draw or maybe yes, but it will take a lot of time uh, and repetition. So it's something that for me, it's an intrinsic characteristic of, it's using an intrinsic characteristic of generative art. So I'm trying to put this in all the, the or trying to explore some of these visual effects in all my works. And then, yeah, let's make that it finishes also like here so they overlap and you can see that it's really different the left part of the circle or the arcs and the right part and it's always different because of this randomness but we have something we have a circle with an upper part which is white and then a lower part which is orange and it's really organic the this kind of overlapping part um, in contrast with the with the left part, which is a straight line. So we can play with that. We can also then start playing with, I don't know, uh, opacity of this line, the opacity of these lines, which can also be random. And then uh, playing with this, we can create this kind of organic, drawings or elements, but which for me have the soul um, of generative art because cannot be created in any other way. And this is just a, a small example, but it took us like 22 lines of code 
okay, this doesn't count 21. Some of them are empty. So it's super, super uh, going to the, to the, yeah, to the core of, of the algorithm and generative part. And uh, this is what uh, was done with a little more of noisy behaviors and things here to just add some details with purple, uh, create some gradients from gray to white, then add the contrast with uh, blue, some background colors here to break the continuity and things like that. So, um, yeah, that was the super, uh, awesome. I think, yeah, coding that's beautiful. master um, class. <laughs> no, that's great. No, that's absolutely great. Uh, we do have a question from the audience. So um, Dada was asking about the program that you're using, which is processing. Um, and then he's saying, I'm a, a graphic designer with little coding experience or knowledge. What language do you recommend to start with? Processing, of course. <laughs> it's the one I teach also to graphic designers. It's uh, really visual and it makes the learning curve to start coding uh, really easy. I remember when I started doing visuals and interactive installations and generative visuals, I was coding in C++ and it was a nightmare. Uh, someone after two or three years uh, talked to me about processing and I was like, oh, no, no, I'm coding in C++, no worries. And then the first time I started using it was like, oh my God, this is super awesome because the workflow for creativity can be more smooth and you can be more focused on creativity rather than solving coding issues. So um, yeah, my recommendation is starting with processing, maybe then jumping to P5GS to processing JavaScript, but starting with, yeah, with processing. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. And thank you, Dada, for your question. And hope that yeah. uh, that replies Thanks. your question. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we are now at the end of this masterclass, this awesome masterclass and interview. So I want to thank you so much, Anna, for taking the time to, you know, prepare for this, answer my questions, taking time to show us the, the demo as well. It was awesome to finally meet you and finally talk about your creative journey. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you a lot for having me here, mm -hmm. for having the opportunity to share to share what I love. So yeah, thanks a lot for for this. Let us know thank where you. can we find you and uh, which do you have any exhibitions coming up very soon or or recently that we can we can take a look at if someone wants to look up for you. No, I have um I have a, an exhibition in Tunisia Tunisia. In Tunis, coming uh, next month, but in a super super small gallery, which uh, I think it will be amazing because it will make my work travel in to some places that I never thought uh, I would be exhibiting. So this this is for me super super nice and cool. And then. Um, I have another project, but it won't, that it's coming for, for San Jordi, which is the day of the, of the books and roses here in, in Barcelona, in Catalonia. And it's an ex libris. So it's, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a commission work and I'm super happy also because I will be doing an ex libris, which for me, it's something really medieval or, or, ancient because it goes to books in, in yeah. libraries and then it will That's be crazy. done by an algorithm and generative art so i'm super happy with that oh that's awesome that's awesome it's such a it's such an interesting uh, festivity that <laughs> is happening in barcelona so it's it's awesome that you're bringing it for it's like for for such a love for those who don't know it's a sort of valentine's day here so it's uh it's awesome that's great. That's great. So can't wait to see what you're going to create this year. Um, let's see also if your if your um, trip to Tunisia is going to bring any, you know, any new inspiration, new landscape inspiration or of any sorts. Um, so 
Yeah, thank you again so much for taking the time. And I also want to thank everyone who was in the audience for being with us. I know that there wasn't many questions, but there were a lot of reactions, a lot of hearts. So very happy that you guys enjoyed it. And thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Anna. I hope you have a great day or evening at this point. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for being there. Thanks for, for the thank questions you. and the comments on Discord. Thank you, everyone. Gracias. Bye, everyone. Gracias. Gracias. Ciao. Thank you for listening to the AOI streams. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and subscribe to listen to more stories from the pioneers of the ecosystem.